Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the Gamo Expo 26 air rifle. Gamo, or to give them their proper name, Industrias El Gamo, are one of the biggest manufacturers of air guns and related accessories in Europe, based in Barcelona in Spain. The company was originally founded in 1889 as the manufacturer of lead products, but the current company as we know them today with its current name was established in the late 1950s and they began making air guns in 1961. Uh, these air guns were introduced to the UK in I believe the late 1960s or early 1970s but were marketed as El Gamo as opposed to just Gamo which they use today although a lot of these earlier air guns were sold in the UK under the ASI brand name uh, but that's a subject for another video. So this model, the Expo 26, was part of Gamo's Buckmasters series of air rifles and despite being a relatively modern gun there's not actually a whole lot of information out there about it. I'm not sure when it was first introduced, but I suspect maybe the early 1990s or something like that. And whilst it's not a current model, I don't think it's long out of production. So, let's take a closer look at the Gamo Expo 26 air rifle. The Expo 26 is a spring piston brake barrel rifle, uh, suitable for plinking, pest control and informal target shooting. It's 40.5 inches or 103 centimetres long and weighs just under 5.1 pounds or 2.3 kilograms. It has a 17.5 inch or 44 centimetre long rifled barrel. Uh, this one is in 177 calibre. Now I believe they were originally only made in 177 but by the end of production I think they were also making a 2.2 version. Now the first thing you notice about the barrel is that it has a polymer coating with just a steel internal core. Um, the barrel block at the end, uh, the front of the compression chamber and even the barrel catch plunger are all made of plastic. Um, I do worry about the strength and potential wear of parts like that which could cause the uh, lock up of the barrel to become loose which would reduce accuracy. Um, I've also had another Gamo rifle with this kind of plastic on plastic arrangement and one of those plastic parts did actually split and break. Uh, admittedly it was whilst I was disassembling it which Gamo clearly don't want you to do as all of the pins are peened in place but still um, you don't expect it to break just with a little bit of maintenance. It has a sporty style hardwood stock. Now I'm not 100% sure what wood that is but I suspect it's probably beech and then just finished in quite a dark lacquer has a nice raised cheek piece which technically makes it a right-handed gun but I don't think a left-handed shooter would have too much of a problem with it. Uh, the stock is quite squared off with some sharp lines and corners uh, particularly on the forend. Now most of the photos I've seen of Expo 26's have a much more rounded forend uh, especially the newer ones. Uh, I think this particular example is an older one so I suspect that that was a change they made at some point during production. Now it doesn't have any checkering or finger grooves or anything and in all honesty I'm not the biggest fan of the look of the stock uh, but it's comfortable and practical enough. And in terms of hardware it has a black plastic trigger guard, end cap and butt plate but they all feel quite weak and flimsy uh, for example with the trigger guard you can see how much I can actually bend it just by putting a small amount of pressure on it. So I'm now going to uh, remove the stock so I can show you what's going on under there. With the stock off you can see the natural colour of the wood inside. Uh, looking at the action itself you can see a two-piece pivoting cocking link with a somewhat flimsy looking transfer bar which takes us back to the trigger. Um, although Gamo guns are made in Spain this is actually a stock Chinese made 
trigger unit which can be found on a number of guns made by Gamo, SMK and Crossman. Uh, it's all steel, uh, the majority of which is stamped. Now the trigger is single stage and it can be adjusted using this screw behind the trigger blade although my experience of uh, this kind of trigger unit is that the adjustment doesn't actually make a huge amount of difference. Now it's got a small amount of creep but it breaks crisply enough. Uh, it's a pretty standard trigger for this kind of gun. Uh, my only real criticism though is with the shape of the stock as when the trigger is pulled all the way back it doesn't actually leave a lot of space on the trigger blade for your finger. Uh, and because of that it doesn't make it particularly comfortable. Now the Expo 26 has a manual safety as part of the trigger unit uh, which just comes back to block the trigger from being pulled but it's nicely positioned in front of the trigger so you can flick it off with your trigger finger and if you look at the bottom of the trigger guard it has a marking for F and S for fire and safe. In terms of sights the front sight it's just a simple thick plastic blade which is moulded into the polymer barrel coating but it does have a nice metal hood on it. Now the rear sight is a metal flat spring with this plastic unit at the back and it's adjustable for both windage and elevation using these nicely numbered click wheels. Now the open sights are very typical of Gamo for the time. Uh, they aren't great, uh, the front one's okay but the notch in the rear sight is a bit too small for that uh, chunky front sight which means the rifle has a very poor sight picture and if you want to mount an optic it does have a standard 11mm dovetail scope rail. Now looking at the markings on the top of the main cylinder we have just lightly in the finish Gamo made in Spain. Then on the left hand side of the barrel we have Expo 26 calibre marking, Cal 4.5, 177 and made in Spain again and those markings are just moulded into the plastic barrel coating and then on the other side of the barrel block we have the serial number uh, just stamped into the plastic this one being 2219131 uh, unfortunately I don't have any information on how many were made or what the serial number ranges for them were then we have that F and S for fire and safe on the trigger guard which I showed you earlier on and lastly just a small Gamo logo stamped into the top of the front uh, rear sight. So I'm now going to test the rifle. I'm first going to test the accuracy. So I'm going to find, fire 10 shots at one of these 14 centimeter square targets at a range of around 12 meters using these 8.3 grain SMK black BS45 pellets. Here I have my target. Now the accuracy for open sights isn't bad, I'm happy with that. The size of the whole group was an inch and a quarter, but seven of the ten pellets all went into this half inch group. Now obviously I do need to adjust uh, the sights so they go left and down a bit more. So I'm now going to test the power by firing another ten of those uh, 8.3 grain SMK BS45 pellets over the chronograph. Here I have my chronograph test sheet and I've already done all of my calculations. Now with those 8.3 grain SMK BS45 pellets I got an average velocity of 468.52 feet per second with a spread of 50 feet per second, the highest being uh, 489.3 feet per second and the lowest being 439.3 feet per second. So using that average of 468.52 feet per second that gives me a power of 4.05 foot pounds. 
Now, the testing data I found for the Expo 26 suggests that the velocity should be somewhere between 560 and 623 feet per second in 177, so this particular example uh, appears to be slightly underpowered. So there you've seen the Gamo Expo 26 air rifle. Now this really is quite a nice gun to shoot and the accuracy isn't bad. Uh, whilst it's not particularly powerful for a target or plinking rifle, that doesn't matter at all. Uh, the only downside for me really is the large amount of plastic on the gun, especially on key components. Um, for me personally, I'm not a massive fan of the look of the gun either. Um, with regard to price or value, I know they're not available new anymore, but I couldn't actually find a retail price of when they were, and I couldn't find any used for sale, so I can't actually even give you a kind of going rate for a second hand one. Um, it doesn't feel like a massively expensive gun. I certainly can't imagine them selling for any more than £100. Uh, I only paid £15 for this one, but it is worth more than that. So, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video interesting. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury. And until next time, keep your arms in the air.